says that we care about how much we earn and consume, mainly in relation to how other people around us earn and consume. Other people's income and consumption matter to us more than our absolute well-being, or our own earnings and consumption in isolation, or in comparison to a moment in the past. Put simply, how happy we are with our income and consumption is strongly dictated by those of other people. According to the relative income hypothesis, we prefer a smaller wage rise if it is greater than those of others around us than a large one that is the same as theirs. Let's imagine two scenarios in an office where Tom works. Scenario 1, everyone in the office got a wage rise of $150 per week. Scenario 2, Tom received a wage rise of $100 per week, while everybody else only received a $50 rise. Tom would be happier in the second scenario, so says the relative income hypothesis. Our societies consist of people up and down the socioeconomic ladder. In other words, there are rich people, middle-income individuals, and those on lower incomes. People near the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder spend more of their income than their counterparts near the top. They spend more because they want to close the consumption gap. Relative income hypothesis contrasts with permanent income hypothesis, a consumer spending theory which states that we will spend money at a level that is consistent with our expected long-term average income. Our level of expected long-term income is then thought of as our level of permanent income that can be spent safely. We all save only if our current income is greater than our anticipated level of permanent income. We do this to guard against future reductions in income, so the permanent income hypothesis states.